Dzień dobry. Dzisiaj w moim studiu wyjątkowy gość, Fabrice Pax, dyrektor budowy kompleksu Alefiny 3. Yes, hello. Nice to meet you. Jest pan pierwszy raz w Polsce? No, I came in Poland uh, 30 years ago to visit a friend when I was a student who is married with a Polish woman. So I visit Krakow. Ale w Płocku jest pan pierwszy raz. Czy miał pan okazję coś tutaj zwiedzić? Uh, I visit a lot of places in Polsk uh, and also a lot of places in Poland because usually I use my spare time to stay in Poland and to visit Poland, not to travel too much. Jak ocenia pan nasze miasto? No, it's a very nice city. I, I like the place. Uh, I've been living in a very good condition. I'm very satisfied by, by here. My, my wife and my two kids are with me. And also the, the full family is very, very happy to be here. It's, uh, you find everything. We are, we are in Europe and we are in a very good condition. We, we enjoy the city. Ja mam dla Pana taki upominek. Tutaj są zdjęcia naszego wyjątkowego fotografa, Pana Jana Waczkowskiego. I które przedstawiają Płock pod kątem e, właśnie przemysłu, czyli między innymi Orlenu. Bardzo proszę. Thank you. E, polska kuchnia jest oceniana jako jedna z najlepszych na świecie. E, czy zdążył pan już posmakować jakichś naszych potraw i która panu najbardziej smakuje? No, I, uh, I'm eating quite often to, to, to restaurant when I have some free time in the weekend and usually I, uh, I'm uh, going to a Polish restaurant so uh, it's something that I'm uh, very well uh, aware of and I enjoy the Polish food. Uh, I like uh, a lot of uh, different type of uh, food that you are making. There is some food which is similar to the French food. For instance, we eat uh, raw meat as a starter and also here there is uh, raw meat like uh, we call it uh, tartare, steak tartare and in uh, in Poland also, we can hit this in a startup, so there is a lot of uh, similarities in many, many plates. A z jakimi reakcjami spotkał się pan w Płocku, jeżeli chodzi o Płocczan? No, so I have been living in two places in Płock. First, I was living in the city center near the zoo, so uh, really in the downtown, and uh, it was very easy for me to, and with the family, to go to walk uh, in the city downtown and to to be uh, very familiar with the place. So uh, usually, I'm uh, on weekend also, I'm walking a lot, and I feel that people here are very, uh, usually very friendly, very open, and it's quite, uh, you feel comfortable. A z jakiego regionu Francji pan pochodzi? Me, uh, so it's a little complicated. I was born in uh, one island, French island, which is a territory called La Réunion near uh, Madagascar. So it's uh, it's quite far. It's not really in uh, the French, uh, but uh, so this is where I was born uh, because my parents were working there, La Réunion. And uh, then I went to, until uh, 20 years old, I was in uh, Paris, let's say, in the Paris city center. But since I'm uh, 26 years old, I've been working abroad, in a construction site abroad, so not uh, too much in France. Uh, a gdyby pan miał wymienić trzy miejsca, które warto zwiedzić uh, we Francji i trzy potrawy, których warto spróbować, to jakie by to były? Okay, so I, I think uh, what we, we do not, uh, I would propose something that we don't find so easily here. Uh, we eat a lot of uh, seafood in uh, France, and of course in a place like here, where it's not so, so easy to find, like uh, oyster. Uh, this would uh, this would be my first choice oysters, and the second uh, one we eat a lot of uh, also uh, raw raw fish, like uh, raw meat. Uh, raw meat you are eating here, but we eat also a lot of raw fish that we, I don't find uh, so much uh, here. And the third choice would be uh, we eat a lot of uh, salty pancakes, and uh, here I didn't find also this kind of salty pancakes made with uh, uh, black uh, black uh, flour. Uh, so this is something that uh, is really typical. Typical from France uh, near the sea, and uh, you, you, have, uh, you will not find this here. A miejsce? Three places in France uh, which are typical, I would say, okay, uh, the Côte d'Azur, uh, which is something that you have to see, the area like Monaco, Nice. Uh, This is very specific to, to France. This is the number, uh, number one place. Paris, which uh, probably uh, for me is uh, the most beautiful city to visit uh, if you want to visit something for a few days. And the mountains. We have a lot of uh, very high mountains still in France where uh, you, you can find uh, sites which are unique in, uh, in Europe. So these are the three places. Côte d'Azur, the mountains, the Alps and the Paris. Mm -hmm. A czym zajmuje się pan na budowie kompleksu Olefine 3? So I am the site manager and construction director there, so I am uh, responsible of uh, the construction to make sure that the construction will be done in a safe uh, mode uh, with a good standard of quality and within uh, the time imposed by the schedule.
Ilu pracownikami pan zarządza? So in, including, yes, including, let's say, all indirect people, uh, 3,500, and we will reach uh, probably above 10,000 people at the peak. Yes, correct. Uh, this is uh, probably one of the biggest construction sites in Europe uh, in, uh, for uh, uh, this kind of project. So it's uh, very, very interesting. Uh, it's uh, not inside the refinery, it's uh, just a little outside. So it's uh, uh, what we call the green field and it's, uh, it allows us to make a lot of uh, uh, special technique of construction. And it's a very, very interesting uh, job and very challenging because of the size uh, and the number of, uh, of uh, subcontractors involved. So extremely uh, interesting job. And in this kind of uh, business, uh, for instance, I've got a lot of friends and a lot of colleagues who are working uh, everywhere in the world. And uh, every everybody knows about this construction because it's known uh, to be one of the, of the biggest uh, ongoing currently. A z jakich krajów pochodzą pracownicy? zatrudnieni na budowie. Oh, we have been uh, working uh, with uh, some Polish uh, contractor, uh, with uh, some Polish workers, Ukrainian worker at the beginning and now we are having uh, quite a lot of uh, Korean subcontractor and these Korean subcontractor are also using uh, manpower from uh, from country like uh, India, from uh, Philippines, uh, from uh, Bangladesh or uh, they are using a lot of uh, South Asian uh, manpower supply. We've got also one uh, Turkish subcontractor. Uh, for civil work and uh, is bringing manpower from uh, Turkmenistan. So a lot of uh, Turkmen uh, people also. A, v a big uh, variety of uh, different nationality, a lot of uh, different uh, countries uh, already here in, uh, in Prosk. A w jakim języku w takim razie się porozumiewacie? So of course we are speaking English. Uh, we are, we are, the English is mandatory until from the level of manager to the level of uh, foreman. Then the workers, you have uh, most of the workers uh, would not speak uh, English. Turkmen people uh, are not going to speak too much English. Uh, but until the level of foreman, uh, English is, uh, is mandatory. But in each uh, organization, each company, for instance, Hyundai, Technica Reunidas, or our subcontractor, we are having also Polish people because we need to maintain communication with the Polish client, with the inspector. So we are having also uh, 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 quite a significant uh, organization with the Polish uh, manpower. Dlaczego na tego typu inwestycji jest obsada międzynarodowa, jeżeli chodzi o pracowników? I believe that locally it's quite difficult to find uh, local manpower because the local manpower, the qualified manpower is uh, working abroad. They go to work to, to France, they go to work to Germany. So it's uh, quite uh, difficult to find the qualified uh, local manpower. This is one of the first, uh, first reasons. Second reason, some of these uh, subcontractors are used to work with uh, external manpower. This uh, Turkish contractor, uh, he has been using Turkmen people for, for many years. So he prefer to work with uh, Turkmen people. It would, uh, it would not be very productive for him to use uh, local manpower. So there is these two reasons. Availability of a resource on the local market and the experience of the subcontractor, which is used to, to, to bring uh, foreign manpower. And this is a very big site. So uh, with uh, 10,000 people, most of them are qualified people. You cannot uh, find uh, in Poland uh, this kind of, uh, of uh, resources. So you're obliged to, to import uh, for this uh, duration of the project. Jak pan wspomniał, jest to ogromna inwestycja. Czy pracował już pan na podobnej do, tego, do tej inwestycji, która właśnie powstaje pod Płockiem? No, I, I never work on uh, such a size of project. Uh, we read, uh, I work in the Middle East, uh, in a country like uh, Kuwait, uh, Bahrain, uh, and uh, uh, where we can have a lot of people, but the, the productivity was also much less than here. So uh, if we want really to compare, I would say that, uh, no, I didn't work, and this is really the biggest uh, project in which uh, we have been uh, involved uh, currently, yes, correct. Miałam okazję być na terenie budowy i z zewnątrz wygląda to faktycznie imponująco. A jak wygląda to od środka? Well, you, you know, we are now we are very we are at a very interesting period because we are uh, starting to finish the civil work, so the foundations are being finished, and we start to erect equipment, we start to erect steel structure. So every day the skyline uh, of the site is changing, and we arrive every day there is something new. So it's uh, this is the best moment for the construction where you can see uh, some visual change uh, on a daily basis, and it's a very very interesting and uh, for for the people who are there uh, on a daily basis. Every day there is some kind of uh, spectacular operation which is which is taking place and uh, we are having a lot of heavy crane heavy lift crane and uh, this is a uh, 
really uh, changing the shape of the project uh, on a daily basis. So we are having some uh, some cranes, which are some of the biggest cranes in the world, huh, which are currently uh, at site. So this is a crane, you can see them even if you are in ocean, you are going to see the boom of the crane. Uh, so it's uh, something uh, unique. Uh, and only this kind of project, you can have this, this, uh, this equipment and this uh, craneage. Życzę w takim razie, żeby ten projekt przebiegał jak najmniej problemowo, właściwie bezproblemowo. I bardzo dziękuję panu za przyjęcie naszego zaproszenia do studia. Thank you, thank you for your invitation. Dziękuję. Moim gościem był Fabrice Pax.